We had a lot of perishables left. I told my managers to bring the food to St. Mary's Dining Room. I'd never been there before, but on the Friday before the vacation, I found out they hadn't done it. So I put all the stuff in my truck and took it down to the old St. Mary's Dining Room. And there was Sister Frances busily preparing a turkey dinner. And I said, uh, I got some food here from UOP. She said, well, put it anyway. I don't have time right now. I said, is there anything you need? She said, I need celery. So I said, I've got a case of celery here. She said, oh, that must be the Holy Spirit. And I said, I'm Jewish, but it's okay with me. I knew those homeless people, but I didn't realize there could be homeless children. And that was a concept that I had no idea. Um, and so that hit me. And then the next thing was, the second example was that family that I didn't realize that not all homeless people are drug addicts and whatever, um, a, a big percentage of them are down on their luck. And, uh, and I look at my employees that, uh, you know, that could be half of my employees. If they got laid off and couldn't get another job, uh, they could easily be using one of the many services offered here because out of need. I would come every Tuesday and, and cook. Uh, I was always in the meat industry. I had a good background on food, and uh, cooking was one of my hobbies, so I, I thought if I came every Tuesday and I would help the ladies out by, you know, doing a certain menu every Tuesday, and I did that for quite a few years. I was the first woman president. And let me tell you, keeping all those Italian men in line was quite a task. I think I was also the first one to introduce the Robert's Rules of Order instead of um, banging your foot on the table like um, Khrushchev used to do. So they were quite a great group, totally dedicated and wild and crazy about St. Mary's and just wanting to get it done. The board meetings were interesting. People didn't necessarily wait for someone else to finish speaking before they started. And there were some interesting interchanges in good nature. The hardest thing is uh, to look beyond the services that are being provided to try to determine what other needs exist that aren't being met. And then to develop the mindset of spending money to satisfy those needs based on a, a confidence that the community will support it. That's always been the case with St. Mary's. Community has always stepped up. We have the dental clinic, we have the medical clinic, we have the school, we have clothing, we have food, it goes on and on. Um, but when you look around, I think the really important thing about St. Mary's is the psychological effect it has on the folks who come here. It really is a garden spot in an area that needs a garden spot. There's flowers, there's birds singing, the buildings look good. People feel like they're coming to a nice place. I was really surprised. Over 50% of the clients in there were women and children. You know, everybody thinks of St. Mary's as uh, taking care of, of men that are out of work and uh, poor. And uh, I think that's a real uh, fantastic thing that St. Mary's does here. The thing that I always loved about St. Mary's was that to get any of those, you just had to stand in line. You didn't have to be a nationality, a particular sex, or a particular faith, or any of that. I love the fact that the food that we serve is really good. This is very important to me as a food service director. The food is hot, the food is delicious. Only once did we have fish that I didn't think we should have served. Maybe it was okay, but just barely. So the next day I went to the sign painter that I knew and I put a big sign saying, if you wouldn't eat it yourself, don't serve it. And that sign is still up today and that's the one that I, I look at with pleasure because I know that we serve absolutely wonderful food. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the way David Brewer made everything look so beautiful so that the people feel uh, feel empowered here. They don't feel that they're second-class citizens. Those are things that are important to me. I think we take care of those people that nobody hears about. Uh, they, they assume that people that have no money and have no education, have no way of making money, live somehow. They don't know how they live, but they live. And we are the ones that do that. We step in and we take care of them. Compassion, love, 
uh, helping one another, a spirit of uh, we're in it together, you know. And, uh, sure, I believe in entrepreneurship, but I also believe in uh, compassion, you know. And St. Mary's uh, brings the best nonprofit in the community, in my view. I think one of the main things, we can listen to them, and we get to know them. And um, many of them we've been able to help get out and, and to get jobs. Uh, in some cases, we've had people create their own businesses. We had a gentleman who went in and had a shower. He got complete new clothing out of the bit, but we couldn't find underwear to fit him. Not that he was big, he was in fact rather small. Anyway, we finally, the store next door, men's store, came across with the underwear that would fit him. When he sat down at the barber chair and he got his hair cut, and for the first time he looked at himself in the mirror and he said, my God, and now I can get a job. And by the next Thursday, it, he was working in a, in a, uh, a storage place. So it's rather, that to me was very important because I figured if it happened to one, it could happen to more. Everyone that I've talked to that has volunteered, whether it be on a one-day basis, maybe for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, um, slicing pies or setting tables, has come away feeling that even though it was a small amount of time, that it made a difference in their hearts. It made a little difference here. I, I'm sure I'm more generous than I used to be. I mean, I support other organizations besides St. Mary's, and I think um, I'm sure that, that had an effect on me too as far as, as people have in need, needing help. So that, that aspect of my life, I'm sure it's changed. And, a, and I have a, you know, a, a different feeling maybe of people that aren't quite as fortunate as I am. It's become known as a David tour because you go through and you take a tour with David you can't help but fall in love with the place. There's just so many aspects of it that you don't realize, so much need that you don't realize, and um, I was hooked, you know? I had, for several weeks, uh, been coming down on my day off and rolling up my sleeves, uh, incognito, um, and serving. And I, I, it was a wonderful thing. I wasn't in charge, and I enjoyed doing it. And then David Brewer uh, said, put his arm around my shoulder and said, can I take you on a tour? and uh, I was the unsuspecting victim. And uh, he, he showed me this wonderful village under the uh, Crosstown Freeway, and, and uh, I became a zealous convert. Once you're a part of St. Mary's, you're always a part. And it's not something that you're on one day and gone the next and forget about it. It'll be a lasting place for us to always hope that it grows and it it's taken care of and it's supported and and uh, I think um, you know from the day I walked in the door and took the tour um, I knew it was something that I felt passionate about and it's something that I will always be passionate about. It's some place that really cares, and its mission is in every fiber. It's in the DNA, so everything goes back directly to those who need it. There's no waste, um, and so every moment that you can help in any way, shape, or form, either by your time or your gifts or other things, it goes directly back to those in need. The staff is so wonderful in giving our clients a sense of dignity and compassion. And I think I'm always struck when I come onto campus that the individuals that are here seem to have such a sense of belonging and peace 
their lives are so difficult on the street, and yet when they're here, I think they feel like it's home for them. We are there to assist and to listen and to help. I think we all truly believe here at St. Mary's Diner Man at TLC, as long as there are clients in need, our doors will be open. And in a better world, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could close our doors and say there's no need for us? What do you say every night at prayers? Please help us to help those less fortunate.